What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Hi guys and welcome to another edition of The Kevin Moore Show. Now on today's show I'm about to be joined by my guest Whitney Vosberg. Now Whitney is the author of the book Work the Future and he's also the co-founder of Work the Future Today, a social venture that offers vision, leadership and solutions for maximizing personal organizational and societal potential. Whitney Vosberg Welcome to the show. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. So Whitney, um, obviously uh, this is the first time that we've met um, and you've got a book out as well called Work the Future, okay, uh, WTF. Um, what's, um, what's your story then? What, it, what is it that you're doing? Why have you come on this show today? Well, it, it, always to have a good conversation about interesting, deep uh, matters. Uh, having written a book called Work the Future Today, finding your path to pur purpose, passion, and profit, was based on uh, my journey and that, that of my co-author in terms of trying to make sense of life, work, play. Uh, as a human being, not as a human doing or as a human having, but in terms of turning 40, 
50 and asking myself, well, who am I? Why am I here? What am I for? Because when I was younger, I was uh, very much a rebel, but without a cause. I could tell you a long list of all the things I was against, but I had never really thought about what I was for. So I turned 40 and started asking myself, like, all right, so what's important to me? What, what do I value? What are my values? And then behind that is what's my why, my purpose? Uh, what's my unique gift to share with the world? And uh, what I've learned over time is that the past is gone. The future might not come. All we have is right here now. And the point of working the future is that you don't wait for the future because the future is happening right now, every moment, now and now and now. So it's about showing up, taking responsibility, being one's own leader by looking inside and finding and following our own lead because no one else can be our, our leader, our true leader. Because as adults, we have to take responsibility for ourselves and our lives. And since the future is co-created now and now and now, it's so much better to be intentional about it because intention focuses attention. So to do things purposefully with a reason, an overall, an overarching reason uh, as to why are we here? Why does that matter? Why are we here? Why, why, is that, why did that matter to you? Well, we can be um, a human doing, define ourselves by our work and our work only, um, but that's not the purpose of life. We could be a human having uh, in terms of thinking about, feeling about the more stuff we have, the more we are, more zeros we have in our bank account, the more a hero we are. Uh, but that's not what life's about. Life is to be lived. At the end of the day, you can't die well unless you live well. And to live well is to live one's own truth, find and share one's unique gifts to share with the world, particularly those who most benefit from it and doing it in the best way possible. And what was your unique gifts that you found? And, and also, w w when did you have this transition? Was it at 40 that you came up with this idea? In my late 30s, I started my initial life transition uh, from defining myself by what I was against to start redefining myself by what I was for, what I, what I valued, what was important, what I wanted to manifest and share with the world. And then um, 50, 51, I became an empty nester. My youngest daughter moved out. And so this huge vista opened up in front of me. It's like, wow, I, I, I don't have to worry about bringing kids up, paying for tuition. I have a, a certain freedom to rethink my life. And that's typically at a time where you've had a career, you've had a mortgage or not, you've had kids or not, you've been in a relationship for, for long enough to have taken care of, it ticked off the boxes. Like, yeah, been there, done that. Yep, 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 yep. And it's like, all right, so now I've done that or I haven't done that. What now? What next? What matters? Because what used to work for me isn't working now and is not probably going to work later on. So in search of, of my second act, I stopped watching television. I consume less news, consume ever less social media, so that instead of being externally focused, 
I became more internally focused. I looked inside so I could connect with myself in a new, better way so that I could then connect with others in a new, better way. Instead of just living up in here, I started that longest journey of the 18 inches from head to heart, the half meter. So at that point then, you must have been financially stable then as well. I had the uh, luxury of being debt free. I, I, I define uh, wealth as not what you own, but what owns you. Yeah, but you were financially stable, that's my point. You, you, had, you, you didn't have to worry about overheads or anything like that. You had, had, you had saved up enough, you had earned enough, you had done enough to get to that point to, to, to do that work. Um, yes and no. Uh, it, it's uh, I was fortunate to be debt free, which was always my uh, number one financial uh, and philosophical um, goal. And um, but no, I've always had to work, um, continue to uh, work. Um, uh, but it, it it's about you know we don't own stuff. Stuff owns us. So that the bigger house you have the more stuff's inside it, the more expensive the cars you have. Um, more often than not, as people earn more money, they spend more money, and they're still in debt. So it, there's this thing called debt slavery. So what is your book about then, in a sense? I mean, have you answered it there, or? The book is about many things, but more than anything else, it's about the seismic shift from what was to what might be. The old story of profit first, the global operating system of capitalism, as it has been practiced for several hundred years, as we shift over to a new story of purpose first, so we're going from a focus on how much to why, uh, from a focus on shareholders to stakeholders, and from the old triple bottom line of profit people, planet, to the new one of planet, people, profit. Why? No planet, no people, no people, no profit. So we have a choice, destruction or creation. Okay, so, so, so you're saying live in purpose first, that's what you're saying? Live in purpose, be purposeful, do things because it really matters to you and to all others who are important to you. Um, does a purposeful living create abundance for people? Does it create enough wealth to survive from? It depends on, on purpose. I, I, I stress aligned, positive purpose. The Nazis had shared purpose by the bucket full, but it didn't do them or anyone else much good. So it has to be on the basis of being better together. But uh, I could see someone doing their purpose um, and that may be something that they really fucking want to do, do you know what I mean? Like they really want to do it, right? And and they 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 they're happy doing it, but um, does that always create? A, hmm, does that create enough abundance to be able to, to be able to be able to? I suppose for some people, though, I suppose it's that you know their purpose may be something that they're doing in their spare time, and their main job may be something completely different, and their purpose may be uh, something on the on the uh, that they're just doing in the evening or maybe in the weekend or something. It's not their main right. thing. Yeah. Because there's, there's, that's why I'm, I'm saying we're, we're not human doings, uh, we're not, or human havings, uh, and we're, we're not just workers. You know, work does not define the total person. And everyone has a unique gift to share. And some of this can be very simple. It's just somebody who knows how to smile in a contagious way that then be, forms a, uh, you know, a happy chain of, of smiles. Um, or the ability to give people 
a hug or making them feel heard or valued or being present or being witness to other people. It doesn't have to be profound. Uh, it doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't necessarily have to make a lot of money or make you famous or powerful. But we all have, we're all unique. We all have unique gifts. We're all important. Um, and yet we're all the same. There's a paradox there in terms of we all want to be connected, have a sense of belonging, a sense of meaning, have a, a sense of, of having made a difference, um, of being valued and valuable. What, what is, I'm, I'm confused, where does purpose come into what you've just spoken about there? So when you're talking about it can just be a smile, it can just be something small, but uh, they may not think those small things are, are, are potentially part of their purpose. They may be that just that's just through the people that they are in that moment. And they're not small. Uh, but the thing is, think of purpose as your north star. So that in life, you know, you've come from here, you are here, and you're going over there. But you could go this way, go that way, go this way. But the thing is, with having a north star, your purpose gives you a sense of purpose, a sense of direction. And knowing what your purpose is can help you guide you through life. Okay, so the majority of us probably don't know what our purpose is. Um, yes. Probably haven't got a goddamn clue or have tried to find it, but it's just elusive. It's it's not what they thought yes. it was. Uh, or it's just... Uh, yeah, it's just not there. So, in that situation... In that situation, what, what, what? what do you do? Look inside. All the answers are inside. It's not. It's not the television. It's not the magazine. It's not social media. That's all noise. We need to turn off the noise. Get quieter. Silent is even better. Spend time with ourselves. Get intimate with ourselves. Spend time with ourselves. Look deep inside. All the answers are there. Would uh, yeah, the, I, I would kind of agree with that, that all answers lie within. But uh, that doesn't mean it's obvious, even if you do that process. It doesn't mean it's going to jump, no. jump off. No. So you could do that, and it still doesn't show itself. It, it, it's a lifetime journey and adventure. Not for everyone, though. Sometimes they can find, someone can find their purpose in their early twenties, mid thirties. Yes, but it, one can always um, sharpen it, uh, become ever clearer. They may have been clear at a younger age, though. That's my point. They may. It, 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 we say that's a life journey, but uh, I suppose when you're saying sharpen it, what you're saying is it's always going to change, even when you do know it. I'm saying, what, what, what about that stage for people who don't know it, and it's just ongoing not knowing? You say, look inside, and um, it, may not, it may not show itself like that. And, yes, and that, that, it, that's it, the, it, that's it the cruel true. part it, of it. This, this is not simple, it's not easy, but the, the journey of a thousand miles starts with putting the first step forward. And in this case, the first step forward is turning down the volume on the external world, turning up the volume on our internal world. It, we need to take responsibility for ourselves. That's what's be, being, what, what you could call being truly adult, is taking responsibility for ourselves in the present moment, not being stuck in the past or stuck looking into the future, but right here, right now, Take responsibility for ourselves as our own leader, you know, to find and follow our own lead, our own path, dictated by our North Star. Yeah, yeah. Um, it depends what circumstances you're in as well. You may find that the circumstances around you are, are even tr pushing you so, so away from having that, that, that quiet time to, to, to rethink it all. And also in that quiet time, it might just drive you crazy anyway. 
uh, trying to go into that space because it, you've done it so many times going into that space that that it's just there, there's still nothing there in, in in the first place. Do you know what I mean? For some people, I you know uh, what I speak of, what we're speaking about, yeah, it, it, um, for a number of people, it's a total alien um, experience uh, or something that's not uh, within reach. Uh, for example. If you are so busy <clears throat> trying to take care of your basic needs, such as food, shelter, health care, um, education. Basic needs, uh, yep, yep. Yeah, basic, if, you're, if, if you are in dire need and, and in pursuit of your basic needs, then you might not be able to have the luxury of inner inquiry. On the other hand, if you get just beyond that point, um, without all the distraction of the stuff that many of us in um, so-called wealthier societies um, are surrounded by, um, much of which are traps and uh, <laughs> illusions and uh, ah, things that, and distractions, um, take us away from what was really important. What's really important is, for example, social media gives you the impression of connection, but it's not about connection, it's about connectivity. But it's just that if, if uh, folks who uh, live um, simpler lives with less stuff have less distractions once their basic needs are met. Yeah, but then is social media much, is it the distraction? I mean, we blame social media, but you know, is it really? Um... Social media is highly manipulative. It's responsible for, uh, in part, for Brexit in the UK, for the last presidential election in the United States, and a lot more. Yeah, but it's great for business, though, isn't it? <laughs> it's great for a, a very select few. Well, no, if you own a business, it, it, it's, it's probably one of the top places to, to you know, Instagram, Facebook, you know, it, it's probably one of the top top couple of platforms to 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 um, to have a success, to, you know, to be successful with, with a business, I would have thought nowadays. Uh, it certainly helps. Uh, the internet will not help a bad business. Um, it, it's, like, it's like the old story of... Um, there's nothing that will kill a, a, a bad business than good advertising because the word gets out faster. Social media is like that. If you have a good business, online, offline, doesn't matter. Online can help amplify that, but it's only going to amplify what's already there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very true, very true. Um, I think we blame a lot on social media, you know, that... that um, Whatever issues you may have with it, I think um, you know you're going to have the same issues when you go down to the local cafe. Do you know what I mean? If you've got you know pr problems with being around, uh, w w of not being yourself on social media, for example, or whatever it may be, that that's only going to be there at your local cafe, isn't it? Well, the thing is, uh, you know, wherever you wherever you are, there you are. Um, you, we take everything that we are and have inside us with us wherever we go, no matter what the circumstances are. Social media is um, a magnifier. Uh, it's a crack mirror. It does not show us reality. Going down to the cafe is real. Um, yeah, but so, 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 is social, so is social media in a sense. I mean, if, if you're not going to be yourself on social media, well, how the hell could you be yourself around people uh, uh, away from that platform? It's just, it's just another, you know, it's just another platform like virtual reality. It's, it's, it's like reality, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's us that humans that just you know we're not humans, but it's just us. You know that I don't know. That's just the way I see it. Maybe I maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am. But just the well, way it, I see it. it. It's um, you know, it's like reality TV. It, you know, there's nothing more artificial than reality TV. Social media is like like that as well. What is it you're trying to do here? What 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 is it? What is what is your what is your message in, in all this then? What's, what's the core message that you're trying to bring in your work right now? Uh, awaken to uh, possibility. 
to everything that you stand for, what, what, if I said what's your most important message, what would you say that is? Be your own leader. Even if you don't know what it is that you want to commit the rest of your time to right now? It, it, it's, it's a philosophy, it's a process, it's a path. It's many things in one. It, it, it starts with taking responsibility for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, it's, it's about taking responsibility for everything you feel, everything you do, everything you say, everything you don't say or do. It's thinking uh, through the consequences of all our actions and all our non-actions. Yeah, purpose. So you would say purpose is how we show up in the world. Yeah. 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 I, th I think it's just, it, 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 it can be uh, very um, draining when you, when you think you found it and the next minute the sort of, you know, rugs pull from your feet and it's not quite what you, it's not that anymore. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't that what you thought it was. Uh, yes, it, and that's part of the uh, the fun, the mystery, um, that which keeps it interesting. But it's, it's like the, the the North Star. The North Star is always moving. We're always moving, but we have a relationship with it, um, a lifelong relationship. And but then, so some, but it, then, but, but it, then, some jobs, you know, are the same purpose throughout that work, that person's career lifetime almost. Like I could say, my friend who works on the ship, he's always going to be working on the ship. Do you know what I mean? As a captain or whatever. That he's only got that one purpose. Maybe there's other purposes like being a dad and everything else, but I mean, I guess we're talking about career purpose in the context of this show, I guess. Uh, well, the thing is about purpose um, is there's purpose, which is internal, and then there's the, the world, the external world, uh, that's context. So we're always changing. And the context is always changing, so that the relationship is always changing. So it, it's dynamics, ever changing. You know, as uh, people say, shift happens. Things are forever, always changing. So that we are. Um, I, I read a, a very interesting article by a, a well-known author and historian called Yuval Hariri recently, and he uh, wrote that the number one personal skill in the 21st century is likely to be reinvention. I agree with them. It's because it's knowing what your purpose is, but based on your personal growth and the changes in the world, the con context in which you live in um, are always changing. So you're always having to constantly reinvent oneself. And that's why, for instance, curiosity, playfulness, creativity are so important in this world that's changing ever more, ever more quickly. Yeah, how, how many times have you changed your purpose? My purpose has always been the same. How it manifests in the workplace or as a person or as an artist, um, constantly changing. I asked my wife uh, about five years ago, Heather, what is it that you like most about me? And she said, oh, that's simple. It's the fact you're always changing. We need to be rolling stones that gather no moss. What if I put that to myself then? I, I, I honestly don't know what my purpose is, to be honest with you, not, 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 cause not clearly. Not clearly. Um, well, I, I guess that it might be asking people um, interesting questions so that you and others um, can benefit from what they have to say. You thought you'd have thought so, wouldn't you? You'd have thought so with me yeah. bringing you on this show, wouldn't you? But um, right. I, I, I think I'm burnt out from this show. I think I'm burnt out from from it just really not providing for me, and it really not doing a great deal for me. Mm -hmm. uh, very honestly, um, and that's that's that that feels very sad to have to say that. But that's, no, that's, it, that's the truth. But the truth is never sad. Um, it's just what is. Um, the more honest you are with yourself and, and others, and thank you for sharing, um, it's a huge gift. Instead of the, the BS um, of 
you know, it, it's half of, of the purpose is tearing off one mask after another uh, that we built up as children that served us to get us from a ch childhood to adulthood. But when we're adults, it doesn't serve us any. It's like armor. It weighs us down when we don't need it. So peeling off layer after layer, we get ever closer to our real selves. Mm. Mm. And, and it's, it's possible, Kevin, that having talked with so many people, you need to spend some time uh, talking with yourself. No, there's so many people doing this type of show that I'm doing right now. Uh, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's such a... Um, um, uh, just, just, just too many. There's just, it's, it's saturated. Do you know what I mean? Um, I, I remember being at one of the uh, big, um, big conferences just, 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 you know, six months ago, and I just couldn't even get to, the, to these people's names. There was all these smaller podcasts in front of me, which God bless them all. Do you know what I mean? They've, they've got to yep. start out somewhere, and uh, mm -hmm. I just, I just, just felt like what? I, I yeah, I mean, even just no, no, not that, not just that, but just like. Um, no, this isn't this isn't uh, fulfilling anymore, uh, as, and as much as I feel cruel saying that to you, because I'm sure, uh, even from that, that honesty of, of talking like this, it's going to help someone to say, oh, that's kind of like a mirror to me, what what I'm doing elsewhere. Um, but uh, no, and 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 to think, uh, uh, I think what the burnout's been is just you know when it, when it doesn't financially provide. And you, you, you just have to sometimes say, look, you know, if it's not going to work, you've got to walk away from it. You've got to change something. And, um, um, and, I, and I've been a bit of a stick in the mud and, and not known which way just to, to sort of move with it. Um, and I think uh, there's lo lots of things take, take over there and, um, and your, your, your thinking gets, gets muddled and, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can lose direction of of or, or, of just even the most basic things do you know mm -hmm. what I mean so um, no and I think turning 40 has sort of shifted that for me and I know it, it, it did it, it did change a, a lot for yourself as well when you turned yeah. 40 yeah absolutely yeah 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 so um, I don't know where we go from there but but um, yeah. One thing that came to mind when you were talking, and th thank you for sharing, uh, is that, you know, I, I, I repeatedly say it's an inside job. And of course, that's, that's uh, <laughs> probably one of the truest truisms uh, I've ever come across. Um, but, it, you know, you know what you know. No one else can tell you what you know. Um, but people uh, can help you with your journey. It's just that you have to be willing to, with putting your first foot forward, um, and starting that journey. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, in my early 40s, I um, was talking with a friend of mine, and he's, I, I said, you know, I think I, uh, I'm going to find myself a life coach to help me um, take all this information and insights and intelligence and what have you, and intuition, and kind of get to the point where I can just go, oh, yeah, okay, that's what I'm about. Uh, and he said, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Um, performers, uh, star athletes have coaches. So, and this is, this is before life coaching became popular. Um, he said, that's great. Uh, I wish I, I, I could find one for myself. So I found this wonderful life coach um, who helped me be able to boil things down into two things two interrelated things. He said, you, in life, you have track A. You do what you love. That's your passion based on your purpose. Most of us have a track B. So that your track A is your life, your track B is your livelihood. So this you do to have a real life. You do this to have a livelihood so that you can make the cash register ring. Few lucky people get to merge the two, but most of us don't. So here's a key question. What's your track A? What is that you like to do because you love doing it? And then what is it you can do to make a living? So it's life and livelihood. 
So when I was in my early 40s, I, I was uh, my, my final session, I walked out and said, my life is art. Consulting is my living. And that took so much weight off my shoulders because um, I had something that was simple, uh, doable, and believable. Uh, when I was uh, in my early 40s, I, um, this is at, after the um, dot-com bomb in 2001, and had a little bit of savings, um, no debt. So I was able to um, rent a art studio, and I started painting, and I started exhibiting um, all over the world. And, and then I realized that, for me, art was a, a gift to myself and the world, um, not about stuff hanging on a wall in a store, no, also known as an art gallery. So I, I stopped, but I, I uh, more than 10, I spent more time than not over 10 years um, doing, uh, doing art, making it, exhibiting it, sharing it, um, trying lots of different things. It was wonderful. Um, and I would do consulting projects along the way uh, to uh, pay the bills. And uh, I eventually realized that I wasn't going to be a career um, artist uh, focused on galleries and sales and what have you. And that I've continued to make art to this day. Um, I work in more medium than ever before, media than ever before. Um, but it, it, it's just so nice to know that, you know, this is uh, a gift I have. Um, I don't make money from it. I choose not to because um, I'd rather make what I want to make than what I think is going to sell. Um, and then I'm able to um, express myself in different ways. So I, I became yeah. a, a writer. Mm -hmm. um, so life is, uh, life is what you make it. Yes, yes, of course, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah no, it's, you know, I mean, I, I, I do have a business just tucked away around the corner, which is uh, mm -hmm. going to be a psychic readers platform. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, I, I do feel that's going to provide for me, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, uh, you, do you know when you approach burnout time sometimes where it's like, you know, you've been working, I've been working on getting this readers platform up and running for so goddamn long, and it's just taken so long to get to this point. And yeah. it's just um, what a battle, and um, I, I guess I've just got to see it through. Uh, but there are days when I think to myself, "Shit, wouldn't it have been easier to have a, a job elsewhere, doing something else, and have this as a hobby?" And uh, just just with those two, with that exa exact perfect example that you just spouted off there, which is really really good, where you've got those two paths, and. Um, yeah, why do we do it the hardest way sometimes? I don't, I don't know. Um, it, the, the worst thing at the end of our days is to, if we're lucky enough to be conscious uh, in our last moments, is to, to be on our deathbed and have a whole long list of regrets. So much better to have lived life fully and out loud, to have done everything we want to do, uh, you know, without harm to others, um, so that we've fully expressed ourselves. Because life is like a canvas. Uh, it is what we make it. So for instance, as a, a very creative and artistic person, my greatest art creation is my life. It's not my paintings or my glass or whatever. It's my life. It's how you live life based on the full expression of your purpose, your passion, and yeah, you gotta make some profit. By the way, I, I've hardly had any jobs in my entire life. Everything I've done in life has been project-based. So they have art projects, travel projects, family projects, work projects, but they all have you know, very distinct beginnings, middle, and ends. So that I'm able to make life um, more doable, so they don't have these huge projects that take um, <laughs> half a lifetime and, and nearly kill me. So it, it just, you know, make things simplified, make things bite sizes and, and get help as and when you can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, thank you.
thank you and I hope I hope that honesty that I've shown right now with the audience and everything else I hope that's helpful to them I'm sure it will be yes um, I don't yes. I don't believe in bullshitting and being something that you're not it's just uh, it's not helpful to anyone and it's definitely yeah. not help not that's definitely not growth to me do you know what I mean um, yes I do very yeah. much so yeah um, so and and, and of course um, what what we've spoken about is all related to to the theme of of what the book's about as well. I hope I haven't gone too much off topic. Um, I hope not. All, all that we've discussed is is what I if, if somebody wanted to add, have a long conversation with me about what is work the future today about. It's about all that we've just discussed. Good. You're making me feel better now. <laughs> That's good, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, and where can people get that book from as well? I mean, do you have a website? Yes, it, it's uh, workthefuture.today. Okay. Well, that website has been coming up on the screen for those watching this uh, online uh, throughout this interview. And, of course, for the podcast, uh, you've just mentioned the, the website there as well. We'll also link it in the description of the YouTube video. And I'm guessing that's available from Amazon and all good bookstores. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's available online on Amazon and through Ingram uh, for bookstores. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, Whitney, just I want to say um, thank you for coming on and uh, thank you for your advice as well. Uh, my pleasure. I, I hope uh, that... Um, this uh, can, can and will inspire anyone who listens um, to uh, look inside because that's where all the good stuff is. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.